we are recording. But yeah, I uh, we started a um on the Upson 4-H YouTube channel. I have a segment called Charlie's Chicken Coop, and uh, I just it's really simple, basic videos for little kids that I just talk about like the different feeders and like you know I did that little egg freshness test where you drop it in the water. Uh huh. So yeah, I just do cute little videos like that um, to help. Got you what got you interested in chickens? Do you have a background in poultry? Um, kind of. Uh, when um, my brother, he's older than me, he started 4-H, he did poultry judging one year, and I really liked it, so I did it, and I did it one year, and then the next year, um, they asked me to coach it with them. Wow. So, uh, the, in 2019, I helped coach uh, poultry with another senior 4 h -er, and I really, really enjoyed it. And that was, poultry judging was really the, um, I hadn't really worked with animal, on the animal, like livestock side of 4-H. So I started doing that. And then I went to farm days. Um, and I, they had me teach uh, the children from the elementary school about the chickens. So like I was there for like eight hours that day and I was nothing but chickens. So I'm <laughs> pretty interested in poultry, yes ma'am. Do you have a, back, a backyard flock yourself? No, I mean, not anymore. I used to when I was younger, and we lived out um, in the country. But we moved to the city. Uh, we weren't supposed to. Have, we are not. Ha can't have chickens now. But it's been a while since. My, I have a lot of friends who own chickens, though, and I go over there a lot with them. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. But yeah, I coach poultry judging, and then uh, um, I was gonna do it again this year, but they uh, the you know coronavirus hit, and all that got canceled. Right. Yeah, and then. I did go to, we went to um, the baby barn in Perry for the Perry Fair, and I worked uh -huh. with the cows there. So I, I just like working with the animal side. Um, poultry so far has been my favorite. Uh, so that's when Miss Haley, uh, when DPA started coming up and, you know, we had to build a portfolio for DPA. Right. Um, I, we hadn't done much work this year because of coronavirus. So it was her idea to do uh, poultry so because we had we had chicks that we incubated here in the office I could work with them and then she could set up meetings with people such as yourself to um, build my portfolio work gotcha okay and I see your jacket on the is that FFA jacket behind you behind me? oh no this is Haley's oh know. okay <laughs> oh <laughs> I, I do 4-H here at the office um no, FFA, ew, they're the other team. We don't, we don't like them. Oh, <laughs> okay. I couldn't see the logo well. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, I really enjoy working with the poultry. Um, and what I enjoy really is the, I like sharing my knowledge with people. Like a lot of people are like, oh yeah, I know a lot about chickens. They're like, huh, chicken? <laughs> so, <laughs> I like being able to share knowledge with them about the stuff I know. And they're like, huh, okay. Are you a college, or excuse me, a high school senior? Yes, well, um, no, I'm a high school junior. Junior? Oh, okay. 4-H. Because, um, you know, the... And what, yes, and what are you planning to do for college? I'm not quite, I mean, ever since I was little, it's been a dream of mine to play solid um, college softball. Uh -huh. um, so I do want to do that, but uh, as degree-wise, I am not sure... I have been interested in um, like the agricultural side of things, like what Miss Haley does, or like on the 4-H extension side of it, and um, going into like the poultry industry because there are so many different things in poultry. So right. I, I, it's just all the ideas they're floating in the head. <laughs> oh, good! That's called keeping an open mind, and that's excellent. Yes. Yeah. So I mean, really, I'm interested, and in, I, I really, I just like. I love learning new things, so I'd be open to anything, really. Good. My mom, she uh, uh, she thinks I'm way, she thinks I'm smart, you know. So she tells me that um, uh, I have to do something very smart with my. She wants me to go join the FBI or something. <laughs> so. Sounds like that might have been what she wanted to do. Yeah. <laughs> I wish she had done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my, my mom actually wanted to be a brain surgeon, but. Then she had children, and now she's stuck with me. <laughs> <laughs> ah. So, um, what do you do in poultry? I am actually a veterinary entomologist, 
which means that I study insects that bother animals. And not just poultry, but as you said, cattle, horses, sheep, pigs, wildlife, cats, dogs, any animal out there. But because poultry is such a significant industry in the state of Georgia, a lot of my research does focus on pests of poultry. Yeah. Um, so how long have you been doing this? Oh, I've been working in veterinary entomology for about 35 years now. <laughs> My entire career, yes. I've been here at the University of Georgia for 20 years. And I am the veterinary entomologist for the state of Georgia. Yeah, I, I, I knew there were always these bugs that bothered animals, but it never really occurred to me that there's a job like yours where people have to, you know, they have to study that. And exactly. Yep. That you can actually make a living studying the bugs yeah. that are pests of animals. Yes. <laughs> um, but for chickens, you think about it, there are lice and there are mites yeah. and there yeah. are ticks and there are flies and there are other pests that are in common in poultry. Yeah. Well, um, I do not like bugs, like any kind of bug. They scare me. I Excellent. Know. That's called job security for me, Charlie. <laughs> yeah. I'm that person that they show me like, look, Charlie, it's uh, whatever I'm running the other way. Um, okay. Yeah. So um, <laughs> you said job security. I just got that. <laughs> um, well, yeah, that's uh, um, as much as uh, as your job sounds very interesting. I, uh, don't know if that's the career route I would take, but. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's a very specialized area, but I'm an animal lover. I, yeah. I love dogs and cats and horses and just about every animal, actually. And as you know, dog heartworm is a terrible disease of dogs. It's transmitted by an insect. Uh, tapeworms, dog tapeworms are also transmitted by an insect. So, Insects have a lot of impact on animal health. And commercially, certainly for chickens, mites are one of the biggest uh, economic impacts on chickens. And um, we haven't found a good way to control them yet. So there's constant challenges. Yeah, I mean, there are, I don't, I don't know, because I don't, I don't deal with bugs that much, but um, tons of different bugs, you know. And I, I never really thought about, you know, the type of, diseases and risks they bring to certain animals right right and anyone who lives near a poultry production facility is aware that chickens produce a lot of flies so flies are a really big economic impact not because they affect the chickens so much although they do but it's the cost of controlling them so that the neighbors don't get annoyed <laughs> oh, yeah well um as much as i love working with birds um I think I'd be more interested in the poultry, you know, the science side of it. Yes, the poultry production, raising chickens to eat or to produce eggs, yes. So, the, I just had a, um, before you came on here, I had a conversation with um, uh, Dr. Dunkley, Claudia Dunkley. Yes, uh huh, Dan Tifton. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and she was telling me about, because her background in the poultry science that she does and stuff, so. Yes. Very cool. And um, the like my DPA presentation, I have to give you know a speech with like you know slideshow or um, posters. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the idea I asked her if she had any ideas, and her idea was um, the industry side of it. Like you know you can break it down because not everyone realizes the different the how many jobs there are in poultry and the different industries there are. Um, so I was going to ask you, what ideas do you think would be a good idea? Uh, that's an excellent point, yes. As again, since poultry production is so significant in Georgia, that's an ex excellent idea for a career opportunity. There are so many. You can be on the production side, you can be on the research side. The uh, state of Georgia, of course, employs people just to monitor the health of chickens and to investigate out outbreaks of disease and so on. So many opportunities. Um, as you know, the University of Georgia has one of the preeminent poultry science departments in the country. 
I actually am housed in the same building as the poultry, oh, excuse me, yes, the poultry science department. Some excellent scientists here. The uh, vet school at the University of Georgia has a large component that's poultry science. So if you're interested in animal health, uh, they actually have a master's degree through the vet school in animal health and it's one of the premier programs in the country. Uh, the EPA is interested in, in poultry science, and the USDA has a lot of research going on poultry science. So poultry production, poultry health, poultry genetics, oh, so many opportunities. And as you can imagine, with the significance of poultry production in the state, there are a lot of private companies oriented toward producing chickens. They're constantly breeding new breeds of chickens, uh, new strategies for animal health to increase production, to get the most eggs you can out of the laying hens, to get the most meat you can out of the broilers. So that's a really big industry throughout the state. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Um, I, you know, as uh, someone who started to get interested in poultry, see, uh, about poultry uh, learning about all these different jobs was like crazy. I was like, yeah, I never thought about that before, you know? Mm -hmm. So when you were younger, did you see yourself becoming what you are right now? Actually, no. I don't think I had heard the word entomology until I was a senior in college. And then I took my first entomology course. It was recommended by, by my advisor in college. Took the entomology course and it just clicked for me. It's like, wow, like you just said, Charlie, you can make a living doing this. Yeah. And so I did. <laughs> And I kept going to school, I got my bachelor's, and I got my master's, and then I got my PhD, and now I'm getting to do exactly what I always wanted to do. I got to be a veterinary entomologist. So when you, when you started college, was that, was that what your interest was? Was it to work somewhere with animals or in poultry specifically or cattle specifically? Well, I majored in biology, just general zoology. I was interested in animals, and I probably thought I would end up teaching biology in high school. <laughs> but as I said, narrowing down biology to entomology, just the study of insects, uh, came pretty late in my undergraduate career. But then I, of course, went on for a master's in medical entomology, medical veterinary entomology. So when you were younger, you probably wanted to be a vet or something, right? Originally, I did when I was um, probably in my early teens, and then I realized that so many veterinarians had to euthanize animals, and I could never see myself euthanizing a perfectly healthy animal. And so I, I turned away from considering vet school at that point. Yeah, the when I was younger, I wanted to be a veterinarian, but they always told me, like, oh, you have to, you know, put down a horse for the final stage or whatever. And uh -huh. I always tell my mom, I was like, Mama, if the horse is sick, I wouldn't mind doing it. I was like, but if it's perfectly fine, I'm taking it home with me. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I understand completely, and I would be right there supporting you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, my career path has changed, as normal teenagers do, you know. Uh, I After veterinary, I wanted to be a firefighter. I wanted to be an actress. Um, wow. Um, I wanted to be a... My, my mom and FBI agent, you know, but okay. um, as I'm getting older, I see that what I need to narrow down and, you know, the agricultural side of like what Haley does, you know, and poultry and like what George is, George is known for, you know, the chickens, the just, I, I, I enjoy the agriculture side of things very much and like being involved in 4-H has like opened my eyes to that. So I'm very thankful for it. <laughs> Good. Good. You're way ahead of me. See, you're four years ahead of me already. <laughs> yeah. I mean, degree-wise, I have to do a lot of research on that because I didn't even know there was a, you know, what you Veterinary mean? entomologist. Yeah, yeah, I didn't even know there was that. So I'd have to do a lot of research. I mean, like you, by the time I finish college, I might be doing something completely different that was made for me, you know? Right, right. Another aspect I didn't mention but that is important, and I'm learning, frankly, more important than I realized. The University of Georgia actually has te um, people in engineering who work just on the facilities that chickens are raised in. 
as you know, knowing about chickens, they require a certain uh, environment. So the temperature has to be right. The humidity has to be right. They have to have fresh air because the buildup of ammonia can cause lung disease for them. So there are engineers who work on the, the structures that these chickens are raised in, the air currents moving through there, the fans, the speed of the air movement and things like that, the, the temperature, the humidity, the air movement, all of those are so significant in managing the health of the birds. Yeah, it's like a very a bunch of smart people who had to design these things. Right, right. Yeah. And getting the feed to them and you know, keeping the chicks warm while they're developing. All of these are significant, yes. Yeah, you know, um, Miss Haley, you know, she was telling me about like back in Texas, she I think it was like hog houses or something with a bunch of hogs and they uh the biosecurity they'd have to shower in, shower out, you know. And she's right. like, she had to take like, 10 showers a day. Yeah. And, like, I remember her telling me that. I was like, wow, that's crazy. And I didn't like, it didn't occur to me that you'd have to do it for the chickens and like every other animal as well, that they take biosecurity with these poultry hens very, very seriously because, you know, things happen quickly with the chickens, you know, it takes that's right. days for the, yeah. you know, the egg to reach them. Oh, I just went on a swing now. But you, you get what I'm saying, right? So yes, like, uh -huh. diseases can spread rapidly through these chickens. They take bi biosecurity very seriously. And mm -hmm. it's crazy. But, um, you know, especially yeah, there are a lot of, yeah. yeah. There are a lot of parallels between swine production and poultry production. You're right. Yes, a lot of same concerns. Uh huh. Yeah. You know, with the coronavirus hitting, you know, mm -hmm. um, Dr. Dunkley, she was telling me about um, how the production houses weren't hit as hard with it because of the measures they'd already been taking for, you know, clean sanitation and stuff like that. So. Good point. As long as the, you're taking good care of the birds, you're also taking good care of the personnel. Yeah. <laughs> I had thought about that. Yeah. The, um, so yeah, it was, it was, it's nice, the poultry uh, side of things. You know, like I said, I recently started getting, like, it's like only my second year, you know. You know, so like huh. for DPA, the, I mean, you can, in your category, if you do like, if I go to the district competition and I place first or second, it depends on how many people are in the category, I get to go to Atlanta and spend the weekend there and compete against people from all over the state. Right. And if I win there, it's called, you know, master. I mastered in my category, right? So chances are, hopefully I do, let's, let's say hopefully I do master this year, but because I haven't had as much portfolio work as other kids who were raised on broiler farms would have, you know, um, me mastering is, you know, there's a slim chance, okay, so hopefully, and if you master, you can't do the same category twice, because you're already, you know, the best at it, right, so if I don't master, then I'll do this category again next year, uh, uh, I would have more portfolio work and stuff because I would focus on it the whole year because this was, you know, kind of a last minute decision because the chicks we have incubated, you know, Haley was like, you know, you can work with them. So uh, I totally forgot where I was going with that. <laughs> what would you do if you didn't master this year? You would do a different topic next year? Or if you did master this year, what topic would you choose for next year? Oh. Oh shoot, I don't even know. They have um like the like last year I did the science, like physical biological and earth science category and I talked about the earth's magnetic field and a bunch of geek geek stuff in it. <laughs> it's what my grandpa called it. But uh the um I might go back into science again and because like I could do the same like if I do master this year in the speech that won me that master and I sure. do a category similar like science. Uh -huh. do, biology of chickens or something yeah I could do kind of the same aspect and mm -hmm. master that category too that's what a lot of the kids who are mastered do like if they did um uh something on i don't know like science or like history like if you went to a specific category of sports like something like that you could go into outdoor recreation the next year and mm -hmm. do kind of the similar speech and master again it's kind of cheating the system, but it's what everyone does and it's smart and it's how mm -hmm. they keep mastering. So. 
coming at a topic from a different direction. Yeah, yeah. Good point. Yeah. yeah. That way you know more about the topic and you're, yeah, you're looking at it from a different perspective. Excellent. Yeah, you know, because, you know, I like softball. I play softball. Um, my first year I did DPA, not the first year, the, the second year I did DPA, I won first place in sixth grade. I did it on softball. Mm. Uh, the next year, because I was... Wait a minute, what aspect of softball? Had oh, I was in sixth grade. The, sh the speech didn't have to be that long, and I didn't have to do portfolios because I was in sixth grade. The, um, I just did, like, I don't even, what was it? just basic softball like here's the glove this is how i feel the ball it wasn't it was very basic like fundamental you know and the next year i did i did softball three years in a row oh. uh, and i i built off of it each year so like in seventh grade because i went from a because seventh and up seventh to eighth grade you're technically a junior in 4-h uh -huh. and so when i was sixth grade and i won first place the next year I was able to become, um, do it again because I was becoming a junior in 4-H. Um, so I, I made, I had to make my speech longer and I had to do a portfolio. And um, uh, I completely kind of changed it. I had like topics now and it was like the fundamentals of softball, um, a quick history, you know, and it was, it was okay. Um, I did, after softball, I did softball for three years and I did outdoor recreation. I did my speech on paintball. My dad's a really, my dad loves paintball. He has tons of paintball guns. Um, and then this, my 10th grade year last year, I did the physical biological earth science. The first year ever in fifth grade, I did crafts. And I, I got, I'm not gonna lie, I got cotton bowl. You know, cotton bowl is in 4-H. Yeah. Uh -huh. I got that in DPA confused. So I did my speech in DPA about a craft about taking cotton balls and turning it into like a cotton bowl. Like it, oh, was, it was going so backwards. <laughs> it was so embarrassing. And I, my 4 h -er, my 4 h -er was like, so you've done this before. I'd never done it before. I was like, yeah, she knew I was lying. She had to have known. Oh, it was so embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's kind of neat, actually. You didn't put the seeds back in the cotton balls, did you, to make a cotton bowl? No, I, I glued five cotton balls together uh -huh. and then used a green pipe cleaner to look like leaves in the stick. And then I, uh -huh. I put little dots of glue all over it and put like pepper or glitter on it to look like seeds. Oh, okay. You faked the seeds, huh? <laughs> I mean, it was a cute little craft. Yeah. I've never done it before. And who teaches, I don't, I don't know. I look back That's on it. That's kind of neat. Yeah. It, it, it was embarrassing. Oh, I think that's kind of neat. Yeah. <laughs> this is where cotton cotton balls come from. They come from uh, cotton balls come from the cotton ball. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I didn't win that year. <laughs> oh, okay. But a good this, start. Yeah. Uh, when I was when I first started 4-H, I took a public speaking class, and um, so I mean, speaking in front of people doesn't really bother me. You know, about it like what we're doing right now—a one-on-one -on -one conversation. That gets me more nervous than speaking in front of like a hundred people. <laughs> It's interesting. Because <laughs> giving a speech in front of people, you give them the speech, they sit back, they listen, they don't, they don't say nothing back. Conversation, I might slip up, say something, and you have the opportunity to say something back and be like, that's wrong. And then I'm like, oh, God. Sounds like you may be headed to a career in uh, communication or maybe teaching. Yeah. Or maybe extension like you were talking about with Miss Haley. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, we got completely off topic. I don't even remember what we were supposed to be talking about. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyways, so what got you interested in your poultry position? <laughs> like, well, your veterinary yeah. entomology position. Yeah, uh, I do still try to keep it general. I have actually worked on fleas on dogs and cats cats mm -hmm. and I do a good bit of work in cattle uh, again cattle production is pretty big in Georgia so I do work on pests of cattle so house flies horn flies stable flies other fly pests of cattle they, they, anybody who's been around cattle know that flies are a big problem around cattle I've worked some with dairy pests we consider them com completely separate from uh, beef cattle production uh, because they have different problems as you can appreciate 
And then I've actually worked on some wildlife pests. There are diseases that are transmitted, especially to white-tailed deer, by some of the small flies that suck the blood from white-tailed deer. So I've worked on those some. I uh, worked on mosquitoes. I actually had a graduate student who just finished up working on mosquitoes and trying to control mosquitoes that are pests of cattle as well. So we had a project working out on cattle and it seemed like every time we were out working on the animals, it was the coldest, wettest, yuckiest day of the year. <laughs> but she got her project done and it went well. Yeah. But again, since poultry production is so big in the state of Georgia, a lot of our time focus on pests of poultry. Yeah. Um, the, uh, working with all the different animals, like, is there specific, like you mentioned flies, and I know flies are like for like a lot of different animals. Are there like specific bugs for specific animals? Yes. Uh, to start with, let's realize that there are, as you said earlier, a lot of bugs out there, a lot of insects. There's over 15 million different species. Now, fortunately, most of them are not pests, and only a small proportion of them are pests of animals or humans. I think we humans can appreciate things like mosquitoes and eye nets and, well, yeah, all the things that bother us. Uh, ticks, for instance. We also have a project on ticks. Tick Nobody likes ticks. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> likes <really> ticks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, we only have 23 species of ticks in Georgia currently, but there's a new one headed our way. It's already in South Carolina and Tennessee, right across the border. So any day now we expect to find it here in Georgia. Yeah, like we needed another tick. <laughs> they just like show up like that? <laughs> well, there's a story behind this one. It's actually from Asia, and it only moved into the U.S. a few years ago. About three years ago, it showed up in New Jersey, and we're expecting it in Georgia any day now, as I said. So get ready to hear more about ticks. But anyway, that's just a small portion of our research project here. Uh, we do still concentrate on the pests of chickens. And as you alluded, we actually have three different types of chicken production in Georgia. We have the breeder flocks, which mm -hmm. you mentioned this, the concern about biosecurity around breeder flocks. Mm -hmm. These are really, really valuable birds. The grandparents of the birds that we use for commercial production, they're kept in incredibly sanitary conditions. Um, they're really, really valuable. So um, those a lot of effort is taken in controlling pests uh, around them. The breeder flocks, um, you, you mentioned this earlier with the swine production, you have to shower in, shower out. Yeah, they don't want to risk any disease getting into these flocks. Then we have the broiler flocks. That's the biggest money maker in the state. Uh, the broiler flocks. We spend a lot of time working with those and their pests. And interestingly, their pest is actually a beetle, a darkling beetle. If you've ever been in a broiler production facility and you look down at the ground, you probably saw a lot of black beetles. Well, those are the darkling beetles. And they're, we don't think of them uh, as a pest of the birds, but they are. They transmit salmonella to the birds, and as you know, <laughs> salmonella is one of the biggest threats to human and animal health, so we're concerned about salmonella transmission in the flocks. So we have to control the beetles to get rid of the salmonella. Uh, for laying hens, the, there are actually probably two major pests. I mentioned this before. House flies are a pest in layer flocks, not so much because they bother the birds, but because they fly away from the poultry facility and annoy the neighbors. So we have to control them at the source to prevent, um, actually prevent legal suits. People have been, yeah, producers have been sued because so many flies were coming from the poultry house that it was presenting a public health threat to the neighborhood. For the birds themselves, though, the mite, the northern fowl mite, is probably the most economical pest out there. This is a blood-sucking mite that lives on the birds. It's, uh, every time it sucks blood, it produces itching, and the poor birds spend so much time scratching and trying to alleviate the discomfort from the mites that they don't have time to, um, to lay eggs. 
it actually uh, produces anemia and the birds uh, reduce the egg production. So it can be a significant Im economic impact on the flock. Yeah. It's crazy that you have this much knowledge <laughs> about these <laughs> birds. <laughs> Charlie, I've been doing this for 35 years. <laughs> I've spent a lot of time looking at chicken skin and looking for bugs on chickens. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, um, the main, the, when I did a lot of my research about biosecurity and stuff, it, the main thing it brought up was the avian influenza. Sure. Yeah. yeah. But that's not really like on the bug side, you know? If, as far as we know, it's not transmitted by an insect. Yeah. And I'd prefer to keep it that way. Yeah. <laughs> that's just more work for you if it is. <laughs> right. Yeah. So like, what are things that you guys do to like, like, I, I, I remember reading, about the complete clean out of the houses when they got a new flock in they uh they sprayed the pesticides like around the outside of the building and like and stuff so like are there any other like treatments you the, like people that are in place for birds infected with the the mite or something like that the beetle most of our concern is still in using insecticides uh we don't have good biological controls Certainly sanitation and keeping the birds, getting the birds from a source that doesn't have the mites already on the birds, that's a big part of it. But unfortunately, that's not always an option. These mites are so ubiquitous. As you know, mites are small, yeah. so they're able to persist actually in the house even when the birds aren't there for several weeks. And then as soon as you move a new flock in, even if the flock doesn't have mites on it to begin with, the mites can persist, as I said, in the facility. So they're around the cages, they're up in the rafters, and they can, re they can infest this brand new flock uh, within weeks, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, the, um, is it like, if one bird is, has the mites, like you said, um, is like technically like the whole flock infected or well the mites can reproduce very rapidly and so yes we don't call the whole flock infested when we find the first mite but we can always count on the mites spreading pretty rapidly and unless something is done to intervene almost certainly the entire flock will be infested within weeks if yeah <laughs> that's crazy it's scary yeah and there's very little we can do about it because unfortunately we don't have a whole lot of insecticides that are effective against the the northern fowl mite yeah. and most populations of this mite have already developed resistance to the available insecticides wow i mean because you know like with the biosecurity with certain diseases you can it's um that, that aren't transmitted through insects, um, you know, taking measures to make sure you're clean and stuff is easy, but I mean, bugs, bugs are everywhere. So it's yep. a lot of work to keep those, you know. And bugs are mobile, so they can fly in, crawl in, come in from the outside. Yep. <laughs> so there's probably a lot of jobs open to the prevention of those bugs. That's right. There are actually companies that do nothing but spray, um, poultry houses with insecticides. So you can, there are commercial companies that you can hire to do that for you, yes. Wow. So that's the bug side of it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. like, and you're right, nope, nobody thinks about this, but it's, uh, in, if you're in the commercial production of poultry in the state of Georgia, it's a major consideration and people spend a lot of money to try to control the beetles in boiler houses and the flies in chicken houses, in layer houses, yeah. Well, do you work with, um, like, do you do lots of stuff like what you're doing right now, like in interviews or do you work with youth, like teaching them about this stuff? Uh, yes, uh, I actually am like Miss Haley, I work in extension, so I, well, before coronavirus hit, I used to travel around the state a lot and do a lot of inspections of poultry houses and train poultry producers and also work with cattlemen and with the county agents and so on. 
But this year, I haven't traveled nearly as much. <laughs> we haven't been allowed, of course, to be face-to-face -face for a lot of our meetings. So this year has been different. But yes, that's what I do. Uh, I will be at uh, Atlanta for the presentations this summer. So I'm judging the entomology section. There's a whole section just on entomology. And so I will be there as well. And uh, my colleagues here in the poultry science department will be there judging your presentations. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Casey Ritz and uh, Dr. Brian Fairchild are there just about every year as well. Okay, Mr. Ritz. Uh huh. I'm pretty sure that it's the same Mr. Ritz, but on Friday I have another interview set up like this with him. Uh huh. I'm pretty sure it's him. His last name's Ritz. She has yep. one here as her Dr. Ritz. Yeah, um, Dr. Casey Ritz, yes. I, I didn't know that was his first name. I've heard that name somewhere before. Probably so. If you worked in poultry, you've heard Dr. Ritz. He's, yes, that's where it's from, the poultry judging, Dr. Ritz. There you go, yeah, yeah. So he, what what do you say about him judging the... He usually is in Atlanta judging DPA, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Atlanta, well, the um, ours... Doing are, some. Well, uh, you do the regional. I'm sorry. Yeah, do the regional first, and then you, if yeah. you win the regional, you go. To, there you go. You go to Atlanta this summer. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. I might just. I might just. And then our interview. I might just. You know, like, and then I go compete, and if I go compete, I'm gonna be like, oh, I remember her. This girl's dedicated. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. So I'll see you in Atlanta this summer, Doctor yeah. Ritz. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the, um. I mean, like, as compared to some of the kids that compete in this category who have, like, been raised on the broiler farms their whole lives, and they have so much portfolio work, my portfolio doesn't seem as committed, so, um... Just think of it as, as taking a different path, a different perspective. You're coming at it from a more generalist perspective. Somebody who's grown up on a broiler farm, they only see it from the perspective of, of a broiler grower. Yeah but you're getting the big picture of poultry production in the state of Georgia and all the different components that contribute to that. You know what, that is perfect. And you know, for the front page of our portfolio, you have to write a little cover letter explaining like why you chose this topic and like a little uh -huh. bit about your, yourself. Your self-statement. You know, what you just said was perfect. <laughs> I'm coming out of it. Words in your mouth now. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna. I'm not going to use that exact phrase. But like, like you said, like coming at it from a different perspective as someone who wasn't raised on farms their whole life, keeping an open mind and looking at the all parts of the industry. Mm -hmm. That was perfect. Thank you. That <laughs> Good. Yeah. <laughs> that is what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, write this down real quick. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're recording this now, Charlie. Remember, you can go back. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I don't know if I've mentioned this already, but um, did I say I have a YouTube channel? You had mentioned just briefly that you do it for Upton County. Yeah. yeah uh -huh. It's not mine, but you know, I I make these videos. So this is Miss Haley. Um, the interview I previously was on with Dr. Dunkley. Your interview and the the one Friday um, with Dr. Ritz, she said she's going to edit edit these and um, uh, have them on the YouTube channel. And so this can go in my portfolio. Like I am, like under the subtitle, I have like officials interviewed, and I can list uh, Dr. Hinkle, veterinary entomologist. You know, like sound very professional with it, um, and list all these things because my main project work for portfolio is things that I've done in the poultry area or um, things I've done to learn about it. So I can list all the articles I've read, I can list the people I've interviewed, um, things I've toured, you know, so it's kind of what I'm Good. Here. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. And again, that contributes to your broad perspective. You're looking at all the background that, comp that contributes to the industry, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, most of my project work, uh, though, is uh, I competed in the, uh, virtual poultry judging, the Northwest District and the state poultry judging. Uh, the Northwest District one, I placed seventh out of like 58 or something. Which oh, is excellent, good. Improvement from last year, last year I placed eighth, so. Uh -huh. Yeah, 
And then the state one, I don't know how I did because I wasn't competing with the team. I was individually. So um, I didn't get mentioned in the top 10 for state. So mm -hmm. I don't know where I stand with that. I could have been 11. Oh, okay, that's right. How is virtual judging? That sounds very challenging to me. Well, they, um, the first one I did, they sent me, uh, well, like we were on a Zoom meeting with a bunch of people, um, and then they sent an email link to um, a bunch of PDFs, uh, uh -huh. pictures of the, like, for like, you judge the bleaching of the birds to see how, because yeah. they, they judge the white leghorn hens. Yeah. Judge like how far along they are, you know, and you place them in classes. Mm -hmm. like, like you rate like out of one, two, three, four, you place them like three, two, one, four, like in the order they lay, like good layers to bad layers. Gotcha. You them, like pictures of the like the shanks and the beaks so you could see the bleaching and they hold the wing out so you could see how many feathers they have and stuff like that. Uh -huh. Same thing for everything else. They would send the pictures, like we have to judge the carcasses. And we have to judge, we have to do parts identification, and then we have to place eggs in the correct grade based on the exterior quality of the egg, the broken out, like albumin, interior quality, and candling. Okay, now wait a minute, let's go to the candling. How do you candle it, or virtually? Now the, the, the virtual one, I mean the, uh -huh. the district one, I don't think, I can't remember. I don't think they did that. They took that part out because you can't. Okay. Now the state gotcha. one, somehow, I think they had like pictures of it. And I was like, how did they get those pictures to look that good? But mm -hmm. they had some pictures of that. Okay. Uh, and normally what we would do, we would like be able to take the live birds out of the cage and fill them. And so. Right. Fill the carina, fill the keel. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, it was hard to do that. And most of the time when we do that, it helps us write our reasons and you have to, you know, tell the reasons why you placed them. That if way. I justify so, your judgment. Yeah. yeah. For the district one, we didn't do reasons, but for the state one in the Zoom meeting we were in, they gave me like a specific amount of time to do my reasons and write them. And then they pulled me into this little meeting room with someone like what we're doing a one on one. And I gave uh -huh. my reasons this way. So. Pretty cool. That makes sense. Yeah, I, I was trying to envision how you would do this without touching the bird because you're right so much of what you pick up from the animal is actually when you're holding it, feeling the weight, the density of the bone and such. Yeah, they did the best they could. They sent the pictures of, you know, the shanks, the beaks, the eyes. So you could see bleaching. They sent like, you know, different angles and they sent the pictures of the wing. So you can see this in mold, you know, the good feathers. And then they, they showed you the handling qualities, the fingers between their pubic bones and the, you know, the pubic and the keel bone. Yeah. And then they showed you a picture of them holding the skin so you could see, like, the thickness of it. Gotcha. Okay. It, it did pretty well. I was able to, you know, get what they were doing. It was good. Uh-huh. All right. I prefer to go back to the real thing if you get the opportunity. Oh, yes. I love going there. And, like, it's... um. Uh, we normally go with like a bunch of my friends that come with me like from the they go to Upson County too and they they compete as well and so like, they separate all of us and uh, it's it's pretty cool when we like we pass each other like going to do different things at the thing uh -huh. so be, like, you know it can be quiet I don't know I don't know I, I just enjoy the experience sure okay so we oh somebody coming in <laughs> Yeah, they come around. I keep this on when they come in. So, um, so yeah, I, I don't know. I wouldn't per se say that. Uh, well, no, I would say I would say I enjoy poultry. I like learning about poultry, but it's more of learning to share my knowledge is what I enjoy. Ah, uh, sure. Okay. Before I forget it, Charlie, uh, get. Miss Haley, to give you my email if you have any questions or you want any follow up. Uh, if you want to know more about veterinary entomology, I will be glad to send you papers about poultry, insects, and so on. <laughs> you probably don't want to go that deeply into it, but I'll be glad to provide anything if you find uh, afterwards that you want to know more about some particular topic. I mean, yeah, um, after the the new year, um, because the portfolio I build is from the 1st to the 31st, everything we've done within that year. Yeah. So after the 31st, I can't really do anything else to build my portfolio. Gotcha. Um, for that year, at least. So mm -hmm. after the first year, I'll start writing my speech, and um, it'd be good to email you and get some tips on, you know, different things. 
Sure, sure. But, um, this interview was fun. I enjoyed talking to you. You're very, you're very, um, what's the word, fun. <laughs> so, <laughs> talking to you was easy. I didn't feel nervous or anything. <laughs> well, I'm intrigued by what you're doing and glad you're taking the approach that you are. And there are lots of poultry scientists at the University of Georgia. So if you want to talk with more of them, I can put you in touch with the additional ones. And they are studying out, there are specialists who only work on poultry feed. They're trying to make the feeding uh, more nutritious for the animals. There are people who work just on bird genetics, just trying to breed birds that will grow faster. So there's such specialties here. <laughs> it's amazing. You think I'm specialized. <laughs> there are people who work <laughs> Oh, and even more specialized areas. I mean, there's so many jobs open. Right. In the specific field, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, because, you know, Georgia is like, you know, the number one. Um, Boiler producer, that's right. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we've been that way. For, we've been ranked first for several years now, and we want to keep it that way. We want to keep it that way, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so... Thank you so much for having this meeting. Um, this recording, uh, Miss Haley will probably edit it and put it on YouTube if you want to go look at that um, uh, another time. Uh, okay. So, but thank you so much for having this with me. I enjoyed it, Charlie. Thanks for your interest. And again, if I can provide additional information, feel free to contact me. Yes, ma'am. Right. I appreciate Miss Haley putting us in in contact. That's yeah. been fun. Uh, thank yes. you for that too. Um, she was super kind to do this for me. Good. Good. Right.